Brass threaded inserts can significantly transform the look and feel and the use of your 3D printed parts. But how much better do they perform in comparison to 3D printed or conventionally cut threads? Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. Threaded parts are usually used in bolted connections when you want to connect two or more parts. In comparison to glued connections, threaded connections are non-permanent, allow you to loosen the connection again, for example for disassembly. Such a connection can be established with parts that have through holes and a bolt and nut. Instead of using nuts, the threads can also directly be integrated in the part itself in order to reduce the part count or if space doesn't allow the use of a nut. Such integrated threads can be realized in many different ways in your 3D prints. Starting from directly screwing into a slightly undersized hole, over cutting threads with a proper tab or modeling and printing the thread itself, putting threaded inserts into your part is a way to add quite some value to the look and feel of your 3D print. These threaded inserts come in many different sizes and shapes, but mainly consists out of a body that is threaded on the internal diameter and has knurling patterns on the outside. The shape of the knurlings and the grooves are not for aesthetical purposes, but determine the resistance of the insert against being pulled out or fail due to the applied torque. The inserts are usually mounted into your part by heating them up with a soldering iron and then slowly pushing them into the part so that the molten plastic molds around the brass part. Grooves help against pull out and vertical knurlings prevent torque out. The specific shape depends on your application. In order to find out how they perform in comparison to more conventional ways of adding threads to your parts, I ran a big study with around 50 specimens using my test equipment to answer this question as objectively as possible. If you enjoy these types of investigations, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to not miss any upcoming interesting tests in the future, because still 75% of you watching right now are not following the channel. In the upcoming tests, I'll compare four different methods of threads in 3D printed parts. I have chosen M5 threads for this analysis, which is a very common size that I often use. Other thread sizes should behave comparable, though probably not perfectly the same. If you usually use other thread sizes, let me know in the comments and I might run other investigations in the future. First, I'll directly screw a bolt into an undersized hole. Second, I'll tap the hole. For both direct and tap method, I modeled the minor diameter of the thread and CAD, so in this case 4.5 mm. Third, I'll physically model the threads in Fusion 360, as I have already shown in depth in a previous video. I didn't use any offsets and was quite surprised that threads even as small as M3 worked out perfectly without any rework necessary in both horizontal and vertical printing orientation. If you want to try this out with your own printer and material, I linked my test parts down in the description. Lastly, I put threaded inserts into my test samples with a 200 degree soldering iron. For this hole, I used the diameter of the grooves that my inserts had, which might have been slightly too small since there was a bit of flash remaining after the installation. In order to make the results comparable, all threads will have the same length, in my case 8 mm. All samples were printed on my original Prusa i3 Mark 2.5 in Prusa Mint PLA using 0.15mm layer height, 30% infill and 4 perimeters to add some strength to the threads. I will be testing the pullout and torque out strength of the different threads. The pullout tests will be performed with small test discs on my universal test machine where I will see how and when the bolt is being pulled out of the threads it was screwed into. For the torque out test, I'll tighten the ball until the threads fail and measure the failure torque with a torque wrench that was delivered with my bike. It is not terribly accurate, but still will give good comparison values. I'll also test each thread variant in both vertical and horizontal printing orientation with three samples each for statistics, which results in almost 50 individual tests all in all. So let's take a look at the pullout test. In hindsight, I was quite happy that I didn't use any bigger threads since my universal test machine got quite to its limits during the tests.
So the pullout strength for the cut, modeled and no threads were very similar and the samples failed just shy of 2000 newtons. All parts besides the modeled threads that were printed horizontally failed with the whole threaded section shearing out of the part. The threads themselves weren't the weak point but more the material around. Still with around 200 kilos of failure load they were quite strong and all methods seem feasible for adding threads to your parts. The samples with the threaded inserts performed even better and the highest failure load was almost 3000 newtons. Here again the samples failed because the plastic gave way and not the insert ripped out. The horizontal specimens showed the highest failure load because in this orientation the most amount of supporting material is printed. The inserts in general performed better because the shear area where the part failed is simply bigger due to a bigger diameter. In summary we have seen that if you aren't printing with 100% infill the threads don't seem to be the weak point of most designs. The torque out tests might show the real strength of the threads even better because if you tighten a bolt the tightening torque will be converted by the threads into an axial load minus some friction that is in our case directly reacted at the bolt head. So only the threaded section gets loaded. In order to reduce the influence of friction as much as possible and only take a look at the pretension I have oiled all of the threads before the test and used an oiled washer under the head to not give any design a specific advantage. The plastic threads again all performed kind of similar with no huge difference besides again the model threads that were printed horizontally. With the 0.4mm nozzle they just didn't print precisely enough to add maximum strength. All threads failed at a tightening torque between 3 and 4 newton meters, which isn't too much, but still not too far away from the recommended tightening torque of a regular M5 bolt, which is in the range of 6 newton meters. In this test, the threaded insert could really show where it shines, and all samples averaged a failure torque of around 10 newton meters, which is 3 times the load of the plastic threads. I really expected in this case that the insert is torqued out of the plastic but actually before that happened the brass insert itself failed which is really remarkable. This nicely shows that if you have a strong base part and really need a good threaded connection the inserts are the way to go. Since PLA is quite a strong and rigid material this might have been the reason why the plastic often didn't fail and I'm thinking about trying similar tests with other materials in the future. What do you think? Another benefit of the inserts might come into play if you have a connection that is not only tightened once but rather more regularly used. Plastic threads will wear out more quickly than the inserts so in these cases the metal alternative again is the way to go. As I already mentioned in the beginning, threaded inserts are not the only way to add metal threads to your part and I honestly have to say that this has been the first time I have really used them. I also linked a couple of interesting articles down below if you want to dive deeper in the proper use of brass inserts. The tests have shown that indeed the inserts do perform the best. Steel threads and plastic might often be okay for many applications. The only option I wouldn't recommend is to screw directly into the plastic because this adds a lot of hoop stress around your hole that can split your part. For such an application there are specific plastic screws that nicely cut into the material with minimal radial load. Even though the model threads didn't perform the best way are in my opinion still a feasible way to bolt parts together. The model threads do add a lot of triangles to your part so the model size will increase significantly but printing time at least in my case ended up basically the same. I also wanted to share a last trick which might not be something that everybody knows. In order to add strength to the threads it's a good idea to increase the shell thickness of your 3D prints. Unfortunately this might increase the material use and the print time of your part significantly because the settings are applied globally. Similar to my smart infill procedure you can add modifier meshes in slick 3R or Cura at the locations of the inserts and only very locally change the number of parameters. I for example created cylinders directly in Fusion 360 at the locations of my threads, exported them as a separate body and imported them into slick 3R Prusa edition as a modifier mesh. 
Unfortunately, Slick 3R doesn't leave a closed outer shell and creates seams where the modifier mesh penetrates the main part. Cura works way better in this regard and nicely only reinforces the areas you intended without being visible from the outside. Cura even allows you to create the modifier meshes in the slicer, so you can even apply them to already existing parts. Finally, I'd really like to get your opinion on that topic. Please tell me down below how you usually tackle threads in your designs. Do you add inserts? Do you have other experiences than the results from my test? I've only tested PLA so far. Do you think the results differ with other polymers? What other topics would you like to see me investigate in the future? Please leave a comment. Thanks for watching everyone. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a thumbs up if you learned something. If you want to support me in these investigations, then consider becoming a Patreon or support the channel in other ways. Subscribe to not miss any upcoming videos and take a look at the huge selection of other investigations I already did in the past. Auf Wiedersehen and I hope to see you in the next one.